What's up, everybody? Um, welcome to another episode of my rock review. The album I'm going to review tonight. Well, some would call it an album. Some would call it an EP. Some would call it a compilation. Me, I call it an album. And shit like that. It is Guns N' Roses' second studio album, GNR Lies, or Guns N' Roses Lies, or Just Simply Lies. I'm about to show you guys the album art. Give me one quick second. Stupid ass Wi Fi on this damn phone. But while I'm doing that, um. <clears throat> okay, yeah, I finally pulled it up. But. So this is the album, in case you guys can see it. That's the album cover. Kind of represents like a newspaper and things of that nature. Um, singles albums known for are. Well, technically only came out with one single, which was Patient. Um, yeah, and, um, producers include Guns N' Roses and Matt Clink. Alright, so, after the release of Appetite for Destruction, they embarked on their, and you guys should know, I don't have this album in my collection, as of now, so, I'll get to the album eventually, but, I was just kind of, like, busy with a lot of shit, and, after the release of Appetite for Destruction, they settled on doing the tour and shit like that. Tour was very successful. Um, what else? And so, what ended up happening was, um, Steven Adler, he broke his hand. He broke his hand, um, during the tour and stuff like that. And he was replaced, you know, he was replaced briefly by some other drummer and shit. And so, with the, with the success of, on Appetite for Destruction, I believe, like, people started, like, digging into, like, their EP, um, Live Live Like a Suicide or some shit, um, which I've heard some of the EP, it's pretty straight, very grimy and shit, um, like, the, the we, ugh. um, yeah, with that out, with that, um, EP and shit like that, it was, we released, you know, not only as like GNR Lies, like the first four tracks, excuse me, but the recent 2018 reissue of the album included those tracks and stuff like that. So, yeah. Me personally, I just got like, I just got the vinyl version. I don't know which version, I have to look at which version I actually got though, but I'm good on that because, and shit like that. I'm just good on that. So, the second half of GNR Lies, they were all acoustic guitars and stuff like that. Besides the You Crazy, because You're Crazy was a song for Appetite for Destruction. And according to Axel Rowe, you know, he said that he didn't like the way his voice sounded on, like, the songs and stuff like that. Me, personally, I felt like his voice fit, like, that lane and shit like that. It fit the mood of the songs, because... A lot of the songs, like in the second, the, most of the songs on the second half of GNR Lies have more like a somber, somber, introspective tone towards it. Like, so I kind of thought like his voice, in a way, in my opinion, was decent. Like, it was still good and shit. So, yeah, GNR Lies, um, yeah. Alright, so let's get, let's talk about this album. So, yeah. So, this album has eight songs. You guys should know what I'm about to do. Track number one, Reckless Life. Um, this, this first part is the live, like a suit, live, live shit, like a suicide, whatever, whatever. The suicide EP. Um... This Reckless Life was the first song, um, pretty dope song, it was actually a cover of when they used to be in, I think when Axel and Izzy used to be in Hollywood Rose, pretty dope song, uh, what I got from Reckless Life is just talking about their come up, you know, talking about how they came out, came up the scene, you know, living like a Hollywood, because you gotta remember, they were from California, and at that time, I, the Sunset Strip, at that time was a very 
dangerous plays and shit like that back in like the 80s and stuff. I mean, I believe like it's still, they still have like their crime now and shit, but it wasn't as bad as it was like back in like the late 70s to 80s and shit. But yeah, fucking dope song, Reckless Life. Um, track number two, Nice Boys. This was a uh, Vogue's tattoo cover. Um, that was that song. Um, that song was okay. I wasn't really too crazy about that song. To be real with you. Um, track number three, Move to the City. This was ironically the only original song from the EP. But you know what's crazy though about the song? It actually is one. Of, I believe this is actually the only Guns N' Roses song that actually has horns in it. And I was like, Guns N' Roses and horns? Like, believe me, but this song has, like, low-key, a jazzy feel. Like, a somewhat jazzy feel, like, you would expect from the Stooges' Rob Power album. Very dope album, by the way. I need to definitely do a review on that album. So, yeah, dope, dope song. Uh, track number four, Mama Ken. That's the Aerosmith cover. I believe that song was on their first album, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Which, that album was okay. It was, that album was, it was good, but you can tell they were biting off Led Zeppelin at that. But it was still a good album. But that's another story for a different day. Um, in my opinion, that's the best song from the EP. From the Suicide EP and shit like that. Just grimy, like they did that cover justice, in my opinion. And shit. Um, track number five, Patience. Very dope song, in my opinion. This is my favorite song from this whole album. Um, what I got from Patience, he wrote that because he was having relationship issues, um, and shit like that, and shit like that with his girlfriend, um, Erin Everly, from what her name was. But, like, um, the thing that's cool thing about that song, it was only recorded with just three acoustic guitars and shit like that. It gives it, like, a very cool vibe towards it. Um, but there's also some controversy with that song because Frank Hannon, who was the guitarist from Tesla, he said that Guns N' Roses kind of copied a demo called Better Off Without You and shit like that. And he originally said that, but then years later, he kind of went back on his words talking about, oh, it was just similar. He apologized for the controversy he spread and shit like that. In other words, get your facts straight before you start wasting time and shit. That's my opinion. Other than that, very dope song, Patience. The, the video, I love the video to that song. Like, when he's watch, I always love the scene when he's watching, like, their music video, I believe, of, um, probably, I think it's Welcome to the Jungle. He's watching it in the hotel room. I don't know, I always loved that scene, but. Track number six, Used to Love Her. That's a pretty funny song. It's kind of, it's kind of reminiscent of the Beatles, Maxwell Silver Hammer from the Abbey Road album. Like, it's a murderous ballad, but at the same time, it's funny, and, it was revealed that he wrote that about his dog. <laughs> Some shit. Oh, wow. Axel, wow. Okay. Um, Track number seven, You're Crazy, which was basically like an acoustic version of the song, like an appetite for destruction. And the last song, One in a Million. This was an Axel Rose solo track, basically, as... Axel's playing on piano with this. Um, this was a very controversial song because he was using like a lot of slurs like nigga and faggot and shit like that. And he reason why he wrote that because he write, he was writing about his experiences when he moved to Los Angeles and shit like that. Um and you know, he was used to like all he was not used to like all this multicultural stuff and shit like that, so and people were, I admit, people were, I don't blame people for actually being mad about this song and shit like that, because, you know, obvious reasons, but at the same time, though, he basically, um, he even said it, like, in an interview and shit like that, 
Like, he even said in the interview that he was not a racist. He was talking about his experiences and shit like that. How he feels like nigga, like, he feels like nigga doesn't mean anything and shit like that. And you guys should also know that, you know, he's also been a huge fan of, like, hip-hop groups. Like, on tours, he would wear, like, NWA hats and shit like that. Like, me personally, let me just say this for one thing. I don't like it when white people use the N-word, me personally, and shit like that. But at the same time, though, I get his reasoning. Because he was also talking about, like, police brutality on the song, too. Especially, because you guys also gotta remember... Back, like, in the 80s and shit, the LAPD were going crazy, like, for, like, they were whooping niggas' ass a lot more, like, they, not, not to say that police brutality started in the 80s, but I feel like Los Angeles was, like, one of the places that was one of the breakthrough police places, like, people had eye-opening, like, what police brutality was, so, yeah, um, and it's crazy, too, because, um, um, what happened, what happened? They were, um, Guns N' Roses and Living Color were supporting the Rolling Stones in the content and shit like that. And, basically, I think, like, the league, the guitarist, Vernon Reed, basically, was like, he didn't, he basically, like, this the song, and Axel was just like, he didn't originally want to play this song, but he was, like, just to play it, just to piss them off or some shit, but, um, and what I also realized was because, like, um, <clears throat> like, the bandmates, they was, like, they didn't want to put the song on the album. And a lot of people was, like, oh, because, like, of the words, it feels like it didn't stand right with the group. And also, people need to realize, too, that Slash, his mom is black. He's mixed with black, English, I think Dutch, too. He's mixed with a lot of shit, too, so... At mo that's what people think, like, Guns N' Roses is all, like, all white band and shit, but it is what it is. Um, that's all the songs of the album. My personal verdict on GNR Lies, I feel like it's a perfect appetizer or dessert, whatever you want to call it. Like, post-appetite for destruction, but what you're going to expect f with Use Your Illusion, basically. Um, because... It basically represents their versatility and the fact that they can do acoustic and they can do sweet ballads and shit like that. I feel like Axel definitely did his thing. This was really, the second half was pretty much Axel's tour de force and shit like, and shit like that. But, very dope album. And in case I didn't mention this or in case you guys missed the comment, tomorrow night, um, probably, I want to say maybe midnight tomorrow night. Me, my homo Mike Sears, and I believe Tribero, Tribero, we're going to review um, the Use Your Illusion albums and shit like that. I'm, I'm definitely going to get my notes together tonight and tomorrow, so I might just do my notes on Use Your Illusion 1 tonight and Use Your Illusion 2 tomorrow because I'm kind of tired too tonight. But yeah, GNR Lives, dope, dope album. This is the album I would recommend for a diehard Guns N' Roses fans and shit like that because... People like to always talk about, oh, Appetite for Destruction is like their only best album. And I'm just kind of like, nah, it's because, nah, I feel like, because Use Your Illusion, I have a lot of shit to say about those albums. So stay tuned on that. And also, um, I need to get back on doing the Wu-Tang reviews and shit like that because October is coming. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to review... Be beneath the surface, this maybe this week, later on this week, I'm probably going to review Uncontrolled Substance next week, and then I'm going to definitely do Golden Arms Redemption next week. Um, I'll probably, yeah, I'll probably, depending on the day, I'll maybe do Heavy Mental, but the last review for that is going to be Supreme Clientele, which is going to be later on in October. Yes, so I definitely need to get my shit together because it's about to be Christmas and shit. It's literally almost October. We're about to be in the last we about to be in the last quarter of twenty eighteen. Like, what the fuck? I just thought that this whole year just started, but 
we got, got some good shit coming up this year. And oh, and one more thing too. If you guys can, I'm also going to do a five year anniversary of a Q&A and shit like that mid October. So if you guys can leave out some questions on the comments and shit like that. So stay tuned on that. I'm definitely going to do some more information on that next week. All in all, this is your boy Reg. Hope you guys have a very good night. Peace.